I'm Johnny Montebano, and this is a Monty moment as we get you set for another exciting weekend of college football action. And you look at last week just for a quick moment here, and really not a lot to take out of last week. I think you can say that number one, Georgia looks as dominant as ever, especially on defense. You know, they went until late in the fourth quarter before they gave up their first touchdown of the season against South Carolina, but they look like they're the real deal. But really the day last Saturday was all about Appalachian State. You know, they have college game day, uh, heading, traveling to Boone, North Carolina for the first time ever. And that experience, I watched that whole game uh, the whole day, and that was probably one of the best game days of all time, all I'm told. And then their game against Troy, Appalachian State trailed 28-26 to with just two seconds to play and possessing the ball at its own 47-yard line. And Chase Bryce, the quarterback for the Mountaineers, dropped back for a Hail Mary attempt, which was amazing when you look at it because the ball only made it to the five-yard line and then was batted down by a Troy defender. But waiting was Christian Horn, the wide receiver for Appalachian State, who was able to catch the ball and follow a block and travel to the sideline and get into the end zone, completing Miracle at the Mountains 2, they're calling it there in Boone, North Carolina. Really just a remarkable day from start to finish up there. Otherwise, not really anything major coming out of week number three in college football. And I think we're going to be looking at more of the same here as we look ahead to this weekend's slate of games. And I tell you, I'm, I was looking at the slate. I'm trying to find three picks for you as we get you set for another exciting weekend. And these were not easy because, you know, I'm tr I was looking to try and find an upset Along the ways, there will probably be some, but given lines and stuff, I think this is going to be very, very difficult. But there's three games that I'm that I'm going to be paying attention to and giving you picks for this week as we try and get a bounce back week here off of what was another one and two week last week. So one and two last week in the picks and overall on the season four and five in the college football selection. So again, we got three picks for you and I'm taking three favorites this week and we've got... Uh, a couple of road and one home favorite that I'm, I'm going to go with. So pick number one, we're going to start right at noon Eastern be in an ACC opener for both of these teams. It's the number five Clemson Tigers taking on the number 21 ranked Wake Forest, uh, Wake Forest Demon Deacons in this one. And Wake Forest comes off of a game where they had to fight to the very end against Liberty. Liberty had a chance to take a two, get a two point conversion late and take the lead and possibly win, but Wake Forest held on 37-36. to 36. And so they take on number five, Clemson. And Clemson, to me, an interesting squad because when you look at them going into this year, I think there were a lot of questions uh, regarding uh, DJ, their quarterback. And I still think there are when you look at it. Now, they've won their first three games impress uh, by impressive scores, 31 by 31, by 23, and by 28. But have they really looked impressive? I, I don't think so. You know, the first game against the C, against Georgia Tech to start the year, they re, they really took off in the fourth quarter. But for the first 75% of their opener, not so great. And there have been moments in their other games this year which haven't really looked that well. And this is going to be their first true test here in this ACC matchup traveling to Wake Forest. Now, Clemson is laying seven in this one. And a couple of stats when I – Look at who I'm going with in this matchup now. Wake Forest is, comes in having lost 62 consecutive games outright against AP top 10 teams, which is the longest streak in the poll era since 1936. Now, Wake Forest is 3-0 against the spread, though, as a home underdog since the start of 2019. Clemson 15-8 against the spread as a road favorite since the start of the 2017 season. And the Tigers are 1-8 against the spread in the month of September since the start of the 2020 season. So some interesting numbers when you want to look at it. And again, you look at these two teams, you look at their quarterbacks. I don't know. I'm not really sold on DJ if you're the Clemson Tigers. And on the Wake Forest side, I would give the advantage to them. You know, they do have one of the best quarterbacks in the country in Sam Hartman. And while there's still questions yet to be answered about just what Clemson has, that's why part of me does want to take Wake Forest in this one. But – while I'm, no, while I'm not convinced by their offense so far, Clemson's, I they do bring more to the table than Wake Forest, and especially in the ground game. And I am going to go against it, and I'm going to take Clemson to win 
and cover. So give me the Tigers laying seven against Wake Forest in game number one. Game number two also coming up at 12 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. It is a number one seed matchup in the NCAA tournament. Oh, wait, excuse me, wrong sport. It is, though, a pair of 3-0 and teams once again as the Duke Blue Devils take on the Kansas Jayhawks. And again, you would think I would be talking about a Duke-Kansas game in college basketball in late January, but not so as Duke has gotten off to a great start at 3-0. Kansas, same thing as well. Now, the Jayhawks have been struggling for years in college football, but not this year. And the Jayhawks are laying 7.5 in this one. And the Duke defense against the Kansas offense, that's really what it comes down to in this matchup. And you know what? You look at the Blue Devils defense, six fumble recoveries already this year, which has already matched last year's total. So defensively, it already looks like a major improvement over there for the Blue Devils. But the Kansas Jayhawks, they are cranking on all cylinders on offense. They're averaging 53 points a game to start the season. And the key for Duke, they're going to have to force dual-threat quarterback Jalen Daniels into some mistakes if they want to slow down this Kansas offense. But, again, we look at some historical figures. The Blue Devils, they're 0-5 in their last five games following an against-the-spread loss. They're just 1-8 in their last nine road games against the spread. Meanwhile, on the other side, Kansas is 6-0 in their last six against the spread and 4-0 in their last four games after recording at least 40 points scored. So I'm with all that being factored in here, I'm going to take the Jayhawks at home laying seven and a half. And I think their offense is going to stay hot in this one. So the pick in this one for me, the Jayhawks laying seven and a half in game number two. And in game number three, this is a game that I was looking forward to at the start of the season. Now, not so. And I say that because I am a Notre Dame Fighting Irish fan, and I'm going to put my bias aside here as I make this pick as we as we travel to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, as the Notre Dame Fighting Irish coming off their first win of the year at home against Cal last Saturday. Take on a North Carolina Tar Heel squad, which has been putting up some amazing offense, but not such an amazing defense. And it's the Tar Heels laying two here in this matchup, which kicks off just after 3.30 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. Now, you look at Notre Dame's side here for a second, and Drew Payne, their, store, their quarterback who took over last week following the injury, uh, threw for two touchdowns in his first career start, but only 150 passing yards. And just to put that even in more perspective, the top two receivers for Notre Dame last Saturday, it was their, they were their running backs. So they were not really able to get that much offense going, and they had to sweat it out late with a couple of calls and a couple of overturns that almost happened against Cal. I mean, they were a big 10.5-point favorite. They only won by seven last week. So, you know, it's uh, some tough times there at Notre Dame. Now, the good news for them this week is they do take on a defense in UNC that is very, very suspect. You know, they are very generous, and I think the Irish actually have a good chance to get their offense going here. They probably... I would not be surprised if they, they score in the 30s in this one on Saturday. But the other thing, too, is we talk about defense for a second here. We talk, The Irish have not forced a turnover on defense in three games this season. And that could be a problem against a North, a North Carolina team, which is coming off their bye week. They've had extra time to prepare for this one. And, again, you look at it, you go from the North Carolina perspective here. They go into Saturday's game, they've given up – 468 yards of offense per game so far. So you would hope that Notre Dame, that really didn't do that much on offense last Saturday, can exploit that and get some points and get some offense going in this one. But I, I just, I don't see it. I, I got to tell you, I mean, I look at that offense, and yes, Notre Dame is a step up in class from what the Tar Heels have had to face so far this season, but they also had to face an Appalachian State team, which we've talked about at the Open, which has actually been playing great and put up 40 in the fourth quarter against them last week. So I think there's going to be some points in this one. If you don't want to take a, a a line in this one, I would go for the over under and I would take the over because I think there are going to be some points, but I don't think this is as much as the, the offense might be a matchup. I don't like this. This is not a favorable matchup for the Irish. I would take the Tar Heels minus two. So we're taking three favorites this week. And hopefully this is one that I get wrong because, you know, I am a Notre Dame fan, but you know, first three games, they, you know, they played well against Ohio State for 99% of it. They laid an absolute dud against Marshall and really didn't, had some moments 
in that game against Cal. And I just think this is a problem when you look at them now going to North Carolina and they got BYU coming up after that. So it could be some challenging times up here. I think their offense does get going in this one. But as much as we talk about the, the lack of defense from the uh, Tar Heel side of things, you know, Notre Dame's offense, uh, Notre Dame's defense, they haven't forced a turnover this year. Now, if you can get one, then maybe in crashing into points, Irish could come out victorious. But I don't see it, unfortunately, in this perspective. So I'm taking the Tar Heels minus three, uh, minus two in game number three. So three favorites, one road favorite, two home favorites to to pick week number four here in college football. I'm taking the Clemson Tigers laying seven on the road against number 21, Wake Forest. I am taking Kansas laying seven and a half at home against Duke in what would normally be a great NCAA basketball game, but it should be a great college football game too. And I'm going to take the Tar Heels laying two at home in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Those are the picks for week number four in college football. For more, like us on Facebook and Twitter at GameOnETB, and you can follow me on Twitter at NY. This has been a Monty Moment, and I'm Johnny Montabano.